paintings next door or there's some probably hanging around here, um, they take uh, quite a bit of time. And a lot of watercolors are done in layers, um, starting with a light value and then letting that dry and then maybe doing mid values, letting that dry and then dark values. And so obviously you can't get that done in an hour. And some of my paintings, the big paintings, the, the, the big ones next door on the other side of this wall that were done, some couple of those were done with masking fluid, which protects, it's basically like a, a rubber cement that kind of, you put on the paper prior to painting, at least in the way I use it. And then you do some washes of colors and then you let that dry and then you start working down the value scale, working your mids and your darks, then you peel off the masking fluid and then you've got your whites back. Anyways, that process takes a lot of time. Um, and so unless I have a couple that are in the oven, I can pull out and show you the process. Um, that takes quite a bit of time. So instead, I'm just gonna do a direct, uh, more direct uh, type of painting. Um, and uh, <laughs> I had a, let's see if I can pull it up. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. I did a really quick, small painting um, a couple of years ago and of a Venice scene. It was done on like an eighth sheet, of, eighth sheet size of paper and I really enjoy it. And, it's, and if you can't see it, it's, um, it's similar to this. I did this this morning trying to think about, okay, how did I do that? <laughs> so, so I kind of reworked in my head what, what process I maybe went through to get do that painting. And, uh, and so maybe that'll, and I wrote, my, I wrote myself some notes, okay, okay. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to draw it, and then it says you're going to spatter water. Okay, so that's the first step. But if you're interested in seeing the inspiration to the painting, um, I have it on my um, iPad here, and you're welcome to look at it or take photos of it if you want to. Um, you're welcome to do that. Okay, so um, any questions? Just go ahead and yell them out, because I know I'm just flying right into the painting process, but sometimes people, well, what kind of brush are you using? What kind of paints? What kind of, you know, or what kind of paper? Or all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to start painting, but if you have any questions, just go ahead and throw them out at me. And you're also welcome to come on up and, and come over here and help me paint. Come on over. And uh, so you don't, you don't need to feel like you need to sit there. You're welcome to come over and get a closer look because I know um, maybe not everyone can see too well through the mirror. So you're welcome to come up and stretch your legs and walk around. Just don't throw anything at me. Sometimes people throw tomatoes and stuff. Please don't do that. All right. Just behave yourself. And also, if you're in the first row, be careful, because I am going to spatter water. All right, we're going to start right now by spattering water. So if you can't see, I'm taking this magic spray bottle, and I'm spattering water all over it. I do this quite a bit, because I love um, the textures you get and the, and the spontaneous fun things that happen when you spatter water. And then and if someone's not behaving, you just... Got them real quick, just keep going. All right, so no masking fluid. The paper's not taped on. This is a, a, a rough, 140 pound rough. So there's a YouTube video of me painting, and I do a lot of spattering too. So if you, maybe this is not, nothing new to you. If you've seen the YouTube video, I do a demonstration of spattering some trees. So I'm working down from. Um, uh, to light to dark and from warm to cool here. So now I'm going to move into my blues and let those integrate on paper with the Was that red matter that you used for the red? It was a, um, I, I, I dipped into my <laughs> Joe's red, which is a Windsor red, which is a pyrrole red. It's all the same number. Um, but it's on a very clean palette, as you can tell. No, it's very dirty, so it's probably some lizard and crimson, all kinds of weird stuff in there. <laughs> I take a forensic scientist to figure out what exactly is on the palette at this point. So I'm tilting the board and letting those colors integrate a little bit on the, and that's the nice thing about what the setup I have here, is I have a camera tripod which has a bulb joint so I can move this around because what you want is the freedom of letting those colors integrate. Now look at the subtle changes in color that have been formed. 
all by themselves. And I should probably have a tissue handy as well, because sometimes, every once in a while, it gets a little out of control. But I think it's behaving pretty well. <coughs> it's running off the page, though. Now I gotta ask myself, is it an interesting shape? <clears throat> so when I'm thinking shapes, I'm thinking things like mama bear, papa bear, baby bear. Like a, which is the dominant shape. All right. You don't want to kill all the whites of the paper. I want about 80-20. Like 80 percent of it's going to be killed. <coughs> all right. Then we'll just tone the bottom, and that's the first step. So on the bottom here, maybe we will be a little more careful. Here, and we'll just tone it a little bit. We'll add some darker. On there later. values on there in a little bit. We're just kind of toning it with some of the similar colors that are up in the sky. And I'd like to keep this area, if you're kind of wondering, well, what's he thinking? Is he making these messes? I'd like this guy, as you can see in, in this here, to kind of keep that area light value so I can make that, my area of interest to make that pop. Um, anyways, that's kind of what I was thinking. We'll see what happens. Okay, so now I have to dry the paper, unfortunately, in watercolor. Um, sometimes you gotta do it in stages. So that's the first stage. Yeah, I've been playing around with watercolor, I don't know, on and off for maybe 15, 20 years or something. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. Okay, so let's look at the lesson plan what I did this morning. Oh, okay, I didn't do this morning. This morning I did not wet the back, but I was thinking about wetting the back. And wetting the back will just keep, um, just provide me with more time. I can play with things a little bit more. But then of course when I'm done with that, um, I might have to dry it a little bit. But actually, when I'm done with my next stage, the only thing it'll need to get painted is the, the <coughs> silhouette of this gondolier and uh, maybe a couple little dark dashes here and there. So let's, I'm gonna try that. So again, I didn't wet the back on either the iPad one or the one I did this morning, but I thought we should give that a shot. So let's do that. And if I tickle the trigger, it'll give me uh, water droplets. And uh, I sell those for $50. <laughs> or you can get it at Target for a dollar. Wetting the back of the paper. The, the colors or the manufacturer or everything? I, um, I'm actually, a, well, this is kind of a funny story. But I, I have a, a lot of American Journey Cheap Joe paint on there, and I have some core on there, and I have some Holbein, and some Da Vinci, and so I've got every kind of brand. I think the important thing is is you have a professional grade watercolor. You don't want a student grade watercolor. <laughs> but uh, I do think there's probably certain colors that are certain brands that are probably um, superior to others. But um, 
I think if you get a professional grade, you'll be just fine. I am a representative of CORE, though I have not been representing them very well, because I haven't really played too much with their colors yet, so I don't really feel I can speak to their brand yet. But I've gotten a couple boxes of their paints from them, so that was really nice of them. And I'm looking forward to playing with their colors. And I, the one color I have on here that's CORE is this quinacridone gold, and it is super, super rich. You'll see me using it, it's just beautiful. But I'm sure other uh, brands are just as nice. Um, and then I also was teaching at Cheap Joe's last week, and... Could you mention your palette for a minute? I've never seen a palette like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what is so it? the palette is a N Plain Air Pro. Oh, plain air, okay. And plain air pro, because it hooks right onto my tripod. This is the same setup right. that I use my paint outdoors, so it okay. looks right on there. Sure. But the reason it probably doesn't look familiar is, is I took caulking, and I caulked. So there was only one divider, and I took caulking, and I caulked some wells oh. to keep my colors okay. clean. Oh, so you just did. the bathroom caulking. Yeah. Okay. And then you got to really smoosh it down, because it'll leak underneath. Yeah. And I got that idea from Gordon McKenzie. So Gordon, he just, his palace is just a butcher's tray. And then he takes caulking and he cocks his own wells, really big wells. How do you keep the caulking from moving this way instead of staying straight? You know, like a wall. Oh, you can form it. It's pretty. Can't, oh, you can. You can. It's yeah. It's like Play-Doh almost oh, caulking. Oh, you know? really? You just, oh, it is. Yeah, it's like the caulking oh, you use then, for okay, house. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah. If you can move it. You can manipulate it, okay. manipulate it, and stuff. All right, and then let's get. This is the, I like these Joseph Bufik brushes. Joseph Bufik is my favorite uh, watercolor artist, and everybody's going to ask. So it's Z B U K V I C. It's Bufik. And you can look at him online on YouTube and check him out. He's amazing. And these are his brushes. They're synthetic, have a real nice snap to them. Um, so those are some of my favorite brushes. I've got a bunch of favorites, but that's one of my, definitely one of my favorite brushes. Okay, so let's just. Lock in some big shapes here. So this will be some distant. <coughs> color. How about some green? So I have no drawing here, we're just going to have fun. Putting in um, maybe some tops of some structures here. Somebody whispering. Are they saying, oh, you ruined that painting? What's he saying? Pretty. 
No questions. What kind of green do you use, or do you mix your own? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, green. I uh, I have uh, three greens on my palette, and I try to create my own green with those greens. I mean, just add different things to it, so it's not a not a uh, a pure viridian or a sap. I also have some phthalo green because sometimes I do these statues. And I like the really bright color they give. Isn't that nice how that all mixes on the paper. Yeah, I forgot to use the Bob Ross language when I was doing my clouds. The happy clouds that just float around, have fun all day. <laughs> no trees. Missed, the missed the opportunity. <laughs> And there's, uh, there's... He's been seen by a whole generation of people. That's right. Yeah. On TV. Yep, he's really introduced art to, made it accessible to everybody. Approach. Everybody can do it. Saffron, they brush? Yep, this is the Joseph Spoon brush I've been using the whole time. And it's mm -hmm. uh, synthetic? Yep, they're, all my brushes are synthetic. They, um, as Thomas Schaller says, there's no, they're more ethical. No animal had to be killed for them. <laughs> so that's nice. But I do have natural hair brushes because I have a lot of uh, Chinese brush painting brushes, which all kinds of animals. Let's see here. But I am going to, I was talking to Joe. I said, Joe. Let's create our own brushes, the Dave Smith line of brushes. He said, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. How will yours be different? My brushes, I'm going to go back, I'm going to do more Chinese brush painting, and they're going to be a synthetic brush that you can use for watercolor and Chinese brush painting. They'll be very versatile. There is already a brush already out there called the Versatile Brush. Darn it. But these would be very versatile. And I think it's important to have a brush that um, you, want a, you want a variety of brushes. Um, some that are um, have a nice spring to them, like the brush I have now in my hand. But you want a nice soft brush at times too. How do you go about creating a new brush? Do you make <coughs> prototypes and try different things? Well, that's why I talked to Joe. Hey, Joe, I think we should have a Dave Smith line of brushes. Yes, I do too. Well, I don't like that, but we're going to play with that in a little bit here. All right. Well, this is fun. Now I'm just, just having I'm just having fun, just goofing around here. Now, what I'm doing is I'm I had basically had a consistency of tea on there. Now I'm putting cream into the tea. See that? Letting it melt into. You were, you were painting that same scene on a larger watercolor sheet. Would you be using the same size brush? I would. Well, maybe I would. You know, I have I have other brushes that have a nice snap like this. I have some Cosmotop spins that are really nice. That are a little bigger. I probably use something maybe a little smaller. But the thing is, is is the back of it's wet, so I feel like I have time. So I could monkey around with a small brush. It, it allows me to play around with it. So if it wasn't wet, um, I'd get a lot of hard edges in here earlier, but now that it's, it's so wet, um, I can move it around. I can move things around a little bit and play with it and um, keep it soft, keep the edges soft. So watercolor, it's really important to have um, different kinds of edge quality to your work. You want hard edges, soft edges, lost edges. 
And so, having the back of it wet. Is that red you added to the trees? What was that? Was that a red color? What color was This red, this, this is, this is, I'm picking up some cerulean blue here. Dropping cream into the coffee here. Looks like you added something that looks kind of red to me. Yeah, there's, there's red, there's every, the whole rainbow's on this thing. Okay. It is a mess. I don't think we're going to be able to save it. Well, what will we do? David, did you say lost edge? Lost edge, yes. I'm sorry. Define for So lost edge, you can't see the edge. Yeah. So, um, so we have hard edges. All oh, this is you know, the hard edge right here. Um, and we have soft edges where right here, this is a, a soft edge. That black that I just put down has a really fuzzy edge, so that's a soft edge. And then we have lost edge where you can't see, like this red right here, you can't see where that red turns into blue. It just disperses so slowly that... Um, yeah, I'm gonna kill some of those whites later. Now the sun's over here, so I'm just darkening up this side of the building and putting some, it's a little bit, I'm going to gray this up a little bit here now. There. <laughs> well, are you starting to see something coming out of this mess? I'm just trying to, the title of this demonstration was Impressionistic Landscape, I believe. I'm trying to give just the impression of the city scene here in Venice. So another fun thing to do. So right, so what I've been doing is I've been playing with different consistencies of paint. So I started with T consistency. This is T. And then I added cream to the T. And uh, now we're going to uh, create the illusion of mist with the tissue. Diane. Wasn't this fun? Wouldn't you like to try this? Yeah. I'm going to hook this up, but this is not going to work. i got to go up to my car and get the other one. All right, so we're all happening. 
back there. Some ships. Get the embroidery in that curtain back there. And you're welcome to take a photo of the original too. It turned out really nice. Just a little teeny one, but I really like it. It's on the iPad. Um, so we're gonna just figure out um, where we want our center of our sun to be. So let's say we'll put this sun like right there. So I put a dot right there. And then we'll take some tape. Is there? Here I got some. Oh, you got some other tape? I'll try some of that. We'll see which one works better. There was a purpose behind that, taking some of the stickiness off, tacking this off of there. Okay, so we need a sunbeam right there. So we'll just, uh, there's very little paint to pick up in the sky. I just hold my brush. I'm just kidding. Oh, here it is. That's the one. Oh, yeah. So you want a brush that has a little bit of a snap to it. Again, got the, been using this basically the whole time, the Joseph Schubert brush. I'm not going to want a sunbeam carved into the clouds. So i got to start where the perimeter of the cloud is, right here. And there's not very much paint to pick up. No. I'll scrub this area here. I'll take a tissue. Oop. I just want a, a subtle feel. I don't want it to look like a UFO is landing behind the city. It's a subtle feel of sun coming through. Oh, well, that's subtle. Yeah. Don't worry. It's gonna, you can get it. Uh, we can get the UFO effect if we want. So I would err on the side of subtle. So how is get the sun rays, I'm taking paint away. Our 
I've got a painter's tape and I've got some masking. got dirty. We don't want that. Oops, now it's dirtier. No one's going to see it. I pulled up some of the building. There we go. All right. All right, you want to see UFO effect here? Yes. Where should we put it? Yes. I hate to put it here, but we'll put it. All right. Oh, you know what we can do? This is kind of fancy. There's a little hole in the cloud. We'll have some sun bursting through the cloud in these little holes. That would be fancy. Let's do that. Right here. Now I can get a scrubbing brush out and we can really take it away. We want it to be light. It's very light. A little light coming through there. It'll look nice. We don't want back without it. You know, you're tearing up the paper when you lift it with a fridge scrubber. So you don't want to go back into that too much. Okay. So the gondolier, he's just a silhouette. So we're just going to drop in some tea and then we'll drop in some um, cream into the tea. use some white to wash too if I want but let's see if we can do without it Unfortunately, yeah, at the end of the watercolor, typically you're working super loose. You saw how loose everything was. And as you progress, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So it's not too much fun to watch little teeny details. But you got to be super careful. And usually I have another piece of equipment at this point handy. My reading glasses. <laughs> I'm trying to... you want to borrow up there? I'm trying to not depend on those any longer, any sooner than I have to. I've got 
I'll carry you from borrow if you need. Oh, I don't need them. I'm young. I, I, I won't need those for years. <laughs> Now, explain to you why you're painting it red. Are you painting it red? I did paint it red, yeah. Why? Um, just, just some warm underneath it. Might okay. pop through okay. under the under the dark. Right. Actually, on the other one, I, I painted a queen gold, which was actually nice. I should have done that. So what was the dark you put on there? Paints gray is my dark. Yeah. Reflection right into the boat. Right. here and there. It's starting to make sense now. I'll leave it there for a minute. Okay. Some of those. What are those things that they tie their boats to? Those are posts. Anybody know? Yeah, what are they? Yeah, I was. 